sword uh, prop panel, but hopefully we can answer your other questions as well. This is going to be much more relaxed. Um, I don't know if you were at the cosplay panel yesterday. There was a lot of jumping around and getting cosplayers on stage. I want you guys to sit back, relax. Um, but you, if you do have a question, please just raise your hand and we'll hopefully be able to help you out. Um, so if you don't know who we are, uh, I'm Tabitha Lyons and that's my dad, Nick. Let's see if this works. Right. I wore that costume yesterday. Um, so we're prop makers. We have our um, started our own business in 2007. Um, and yeah, so we make big costumes. So from little swords to 16 feet dragons um, that I actually sat on her. Um, but yeah, so we've been doing props for a very long time. I actually started working with my dad when I was 12 years old. So we've been doing this for a long time. And that's just another a costume that we've done as well. Has anyone played Skyrim? Yeah. So that's my Skyrim inspired armor right there. Okay, so we're gonna get on to the main subject of why we're here today, how to construct a LARP or cosplay safe foam sword. Does anyone not know what LARP or cosplay is? You don't know what LARP is? Okay, so LARP is a similar hobby. Um, have you played Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> well, yeah, so basically, I pretend to be a character, I run around, and I hit people. All our props are made to be LARP safe, so I can chuck it on the floor, I can stamp on them, um, and I can literally whack the hell out of it. So yeah, that's this is a lot of weapons. I'll put these in the audience so you guys can feel how soft they are and how that weight as well. Do you want to pass them back? So yeah. <laughs> okay. Tools of what you need to make a we're gonna make a dagger. We're gonna make a dagger today aren't we? Yep. Okay we're making a dagger. Um, so first of all you want your steel ruler. Yeah you have Okay, so the tools you need are really, really simple. You don't need any flashy machinery or anything too much. Yeah. Um, this talk is for you guys, so if you can't see or you need a question asked, just stop us. We've got loads of time, so any questions, just ask. Um, so what the first thing to do, the way those saws all start out, is they start out as a foam sandwich. Three sheets of foam with a rod in the middle. Um, that's it, and then after that we cut down to the blade, which we will show you today. But first of all, we're going to make the foam sandwich. Just want to talk about the tools first, and then we'll go for the side. Okay, the tools we use are standing knives. Um, we use metal ones because they don't flex, uh, and you need the ones with the long extending blades. They're pretty cheap. Um, foam blunts blades really, really quickly. If anyone's cut with foam, you'll know this. Um, we go through lots and lots of blades all the time. Don't be cheap on your blades. If you need to change it, change it. If you start to pull it, change it. That's the, the biggest tip I'd give you when using foam. Just keep changing your blades. You must have a sharp one. Yeah, so when you're cutting, if you feel like you're starting to hack, instead of doing a nice smooth cut, you need to change your blade. Um, for detailed work, we just, just use a good old scalpel. Ones that they used to cut people open in hospitals. So um, you can actually sand foam. And if anyone ever, 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 ever tried it, then you can do it. Um, we're going to use, we don't have a machine here today, so we're just going to use just good old hand power. Um, the other thing, you need a, a black marker. We use Sharpies. Sharpies are really good. Can you get Sharpies over here? Sharpie pen? You want to? Uh, anyway, a good quality black marker to mark the foam. Bad quality black markers bleed through, they stain, and you'll end up with this really horrible feel and um, mark come through all the, the paint. I once um, used a cheap red marker, and all of a sudden my sword had glowing green runes, and I was like, I'm sure it's not meant to do that. So yeah, try and get a good marker. Okay, uh, soldier and I, we don't really need to do that today. We didn't bring a soldering iron, um, because it would be too much of a fire. Um, it, it melts really easily, you do need to wear a mask or a very large open area, um, because the fumes are very bad for you. But it's a great way to get details. Um, did we use it on the cutting blades? Uh, oh, 
I haven't used it on anything. No, oh, okay, but it's a great way to use detail. Um, the glue we use, okay, so we use something called Avafix Fix. I don't know if you can get it here in Greece, but if you go onto eBay, you should be able to find it. In the end, it's a contact adhesive. Um, I wouldn't recommend any other glue for foam, some kind of contact adhesive. Uh, do you want a contact adhesive? It's one that you have to put on both sides. Yeah, okay. Wait for it to dry and then you stick it together. But we'll show you in the demonstration. Okay, so let's start making something. Yeah. Um, oh, types of foam, types of foam. Okay, the types of foam we tend to use, it's, uh, we don't use EVA foam, we use a foam called Plastazote. You can get, we can use EVA foam, but we find it a bit too dense. Um, and we can get this in different thick, uh, densities. Um, I'm not going to blow you, but you can get a, a high density, a medium density, uh, and a soft density. I will put it in the audience so you can feel the difference between the different types of foam. This foam is really, we're going to use the grey type today, um, which is the medium density. It's really versatile, you can make swords, you can make armour, you can make wigs, there's all sorts of things you can do with it. Um, the other foam has got uses, the softer one is really great for sculpting big things like horns, great big horns if you need them, and big teeth, um, big hammerheads. Uh, but the grey one is the one that we would recommend, and it's about the same as the floor matting you get, the, the EVA, it's a similar density. So, we're going to head off and we're going to start showing you how to make a blank. Okay, so this is the end result we want. It's basically three sheets of foam with a rod in the middle. So we start off with a carbon fibre core. Uh, this is glass fibre. It's, um, it's the sort of thing you put in a kite um, or use for a fishing rod. Um, we don't use wood, we don't use metal. Um, both of those are quite heavy and they will break or they'll bend. Um, glass fibre is fantastic, it's really, really strong and really, really light, and it's not too expensive. So. Yeah, so one of the reasons why we use a light core is because if you're cosplaying, if you're holding the prop all day, it's going to get really heavy. Um, I once um, held a cosplayer's chainsaw, she was cosplaying as Juliet Stalin, and it was made out of solid wood, and it was so heavy. I, I was shaking when I was just like, I just asked to hold it. And I was like, how are you carrying this all day? So by using foam and latex and um, glass fiber core, it's really lightweight, so you can hold it all day, and your arms are okay. <laughs> Okay, so this, uh, because we're making a dagger, we're making quite a thin, um, thin blade, so we're only using a 6mm core, 6 millimeters. Um, you can use larger ones for swords, for you use a great sword, you can make an axe this way, pretty much anything, but we'll start with, it's nice and easy, nice dagger. So we're, we're ending up with this, and then we'll go into this, but we'll show you how to make a blade first. First of all, you're going to take your core and you're going to place it in the middle of one of the sheet foam. So you cut out a little rectangle. So depending on how wide you want your blade, so my Katerina blades uh, at the front there, um, as you can see, it's quite a wide design. Um, so we're going to make something quite thin, something like this, or something like this. So you need a thinner blank. And it also saves material. So you put the core in the middle and you draw around your sharpie and then you're going to cut out that slice without cutting your fingers off, please guys. Sometimes with a ruler you put your finger over, you don't want accident, so just be careful when you're cutting. And because the blade is nice and sharp, um, he's not struggling, he's, he can do a clean cut. Like I said, if you do start to feel a bit of tension, change your blade. Uh, we also run training courses um, back home in the UK, uh, so this is just someone um, doing the same thing. Uh, okay, uh, we can do cor um, curved cords, you don't have to just do straight. Um, okay, so to stop the core going through the foam, we're going to reinforce the tip. Right, so um, there is always a, a, a chance if you, if you do stab someone with these things, if you, the, the core could just go through the foam. So to stop that happening, 
we put a little um, spongy top on it. So we use the bit we've cut out from the main middle um, and just glue it onto the top of the rod using our contact adhesive. This will take a little time to dry but not too long. So we should have a few more images. basically a close-up of what we're doing right now. So once that's done, we've got some hockey tape. Now hockey tape is a really strong material. Um, it's really hard to break with your hands. You can't really do it. Yeah. <laughs> hockey tape, uh, this tape is a cloth tape that literally people wrap, if they're hockey players, they wrap their hockey sticks with it. It's really, really strong. Um, really hard to, to break through and we use that to cover up the tip so it doesn't come through the foam um, when this is sorted. Again, you should be able to get some on eBay as well. And we're just going to wrap it around the core and the foam and basically seal that joint. Just roll it, roll it, roll it. Yeah, so it does just like don't stab anyone. And that's literally what Nick is doing now. Uh, and then we're going to cut off the end. But don't cut too close to the core, you still want a bit of foam hanging out. That finger tip away. Again, another close up. Yep, that's where I am, so that's good. Uh, so now we're going to glue up the blank by putting the contact adhesive all um, down the seam of the line. Not too much. Um, and then we're going to glue up on the stick as well. Now usually with contact adhesive you have to wait for it to dry and then put it together and then the bonds are really strong, you can't um, pull it apart, it will really stick. Um, however, this is the one time you actually want to stick this out without sounding rude, you want to insert it wet because otherwise it will stick halfway through and you really want that in as far as up as it goes. So, we will see that. Because we use it wet, the, there's one thing you can't do. You can't um, just put this together, make this blank, and, so, um, and then cut this straight away. You have to wait a day so it's totally dry, and then you can start cutting the shapes you want. If you don't wait, it, it will wobble around and it will be ruining. So you have to wait until it's dry thoroughly. Okay, so what we do next to further re um uh, to make it stronger uh, and without the core coming through, we put a leather tip. I think I have a picture, there we go. A uh, cowhide, yeah. So you can get some leather trousers from a charity shop, you can just cut up that old leather bag. And we just cut a little square, rectangle shape, and we put it on the tip. Glue both sides. That's another picture from our training course. So it's quite easy to do. Once you've got the hang of it, the more times you do it, it becomes easier. And what we'll do is, if you're scared to ask questions, we're here. At the end of this panel, you can come over to our table and feel free to ask us anything. Yeah, um, because we're doing a talk as well, we don't want to wait ages for the glue to dry. So we are going to do, we're not going to wait for it to dry as, as much as it should. We're going to sort of speed through the process so you guys just get a better idea of what we're doing. Um, so once you've done the front side, you flip it over and you do exactly the same on the back. Do you want to show that in the audience or not really? Can you all see that? Yeah? Cool. Come in, sit down, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's a really easy process, it doesn't really... The hard part, the hard part, sorry, is cutting the blade. Um, most people shouldn't find this part difficult. Is there any questions so far? Okay, what's you've done on both sides? The next step's just as easy. Hello. <laughs> Callum, where? I'm going to stop saying that. <laughs> Okay, so the next part's really simple as well. Once you've got it on both sides, we then need to stick the other two sheets of foam to make the sandwich. So we're gonna glue up both sides. Now a really good tip to when you're using this glue 
is to actually put on quite a little bit and then you're going to get a, um, a scrap piece of foam and then you can use it to spread it along. The thinner the coat, the quicker it dries and yeah, you save more material so you're not using up lots of glue. So just a little bit of glue and hopefully you can see Nick just scraping that all along. You do want to get you do want a, a full coverage, you want to cover all of the foam. That's the only thing you do want to do. So you can see he's going over the rod, all the way to the top. So, yeah, these pictures are quite handy. And then once the glue's dried, you're going to get the first piece of foam and just squash it down. So you've got the middle bit of foam, which he's just worked on, and then the two spare foams on the top to create that sandwich. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you guys can smell that? Can you smell it? it smells good. Yeah. <laughs> now you can do this in one you can do this one at a time or you can do it ten at a time. Um, the bigger the surface area the more solvent you're gonna get in your nose. So you need a good extractor or a fan or a um, uh, or a mask. All of the above to be honest to be best. We can hardly smell it if use it so often, which is not a good thing, I don't think. But, uh, but yeah, if you, if you unuse it, don't just do this in your house because you'll, be, you'll stick the house out. Yeah, use the garden. I'm going to put these in the audience so they can see it. So feel free to pass this sandwich around. Can we put one in the other direction? Thank you. So um, when the glue dries, you can sort of see because it does, um, the colour sort of dries down. Um, but you can test, test it to see if it's wet uh, by just tapping your finger onto it. If it's still a bit tacky, that's okay. If it starts to smudge the glue, it's still wet, so don't do that. If you wait too long, you can reactivate the glue by just getting the brush and doing a quick... And like take off quite a lot of it and then just do a quick dry brush over the top and it should reactivate the glue. Wait a couple of minutes, then stick it down. So once you've done both sides, you should have a sandwich. Um, we don't have a roller with us today, but you could use a rolling pin. Uh, we use a tape gun at work. And really, you really want to put in a lot of weight onto your sandwich to make sure that it's really secure and stuck together. So a lot, a lot of pressure. going ahead of you now. <sighs> they have uh, like the sandwich that we passed around. Here's our little sandwich. Any questions so far? opens up because it uh, where's my sword oh I'll show you one here because you don't want to risk it opening up on the blade by gluing it all it's a secure fix right until the end uh, yeah. yeah it is tempting just to cut out a, sh a sword shape and just cut three layers um, it's much much neater to have a big a big piece of foam that you can cut the right shape in you, the edges don't spread apart uh, it's much better that way no? Okay. So to be honest, this is really, really simple, but most people just don't most people don't think to put it in a sandwich of foam. They try to wrap it around it or just put two together. The three piece technique is much, much better. It makes it much sturdier, much stronger. You also have neater seams as well. It looks a lot neater. to stick together. We need like a hairdryer. Spearheads, yep, yeah, you can use the same for spearheads. Or swords. So if you want to make a sword, you just have a bigger blank. You have more foam, a longer stick. Yeah. But as we're only making like a little dagger today, you only need a little bit of foam. Okay, so that should do. We're going to stick our two pieces together. Remember, this is the part where you really want to put a lot of pressure on. So you can use a tape gun, you can use your rolling pin, and just really lean into that. Books, 
Yes. Because you need to leave it, before you want to cut into it, you want to leave it for a day. So you could put lots of really thick, heavy books, your comics on there. <laughs> yeah, just put a lot of weight on there. Right, so, let's just leave this there for a day. Just leave it. If you don't, it will twist. Because it's not set. So, you just put that aside. Don't want to blades. Uh, can we have a blank? Uh, thank you. So there's our blank. Yep, so that's dead straightforward really, guys. It, it really is straightforward just to sandwich the rod in the foam, glue both sides, leave it. Um, so the next thing we'll do is we'll show you how to get a blade out of that. Again, it's quite straightforward. We'll show you. Okay, so if your foam wasn't as neat as the first three squares, you can just cut off the end. Um, the first thing we're going to do though is we're going to take our Sharpie pen and we're going to mark the tip. So you want to mark the tip where the core ends, not where the foam bung is with the tip. You want to find the core and then you just want to mark it. Now the simplest thing that we can show you to um, demonstrate this today is a small uh, oriental blade called a tanto, which I'm sure most of you are wearing. The, the smaller brother to a wakasashi, which is the smaller brother to a um, katana. Um, it's the simplest thing that we've got on the demonstration. So it's a single-edged blade rather than a double-edged blade. This one's got two cutting surfaces, and this one only has one. Okay. So we're going to take your steel ruler, and then you're going to cut along the blade. But this is where you can have the fun part. This is where you can create your own design. Um, if you're struggling with ideas, you can go onto Google, look up your favourite character weapons. I mean, I love Katarina's because I play it. If I can just get my blades back. Yes, thank you. Um, you can see they're really nice, uh, intricate design. You can see the shape is quite crazy, it goes really wide, it's nice smooth lines. Um, but yeah, or you can go as simple as you want. That's uh, yeah, one edge blade, so we're going to make something a bit similar to this blade here. Uh, now because this blade we're cutting today is quite curved, I'm just going to do it freehand um, with a long knife. But I use the whole extension of the blade and don't use it short. Um, it's much, much uh, easier to draw through the foam when it's extended. Yeah, I think um, one of the things that people are most surprised on on a training course is, um, yeah, when they're making the props at home, they struggle a lot because they've only got a small surface of the blade to cut with, so really extend that far out. And be careful, again, not to cut your fingers off. <laughs> now, we've been doing it for years, so Nick can do it freehand, but you can use some um, paper templates to draw your patterns out, um, or you can just give it a go. The thing to notice is don't cut too near the tip. You spend all that time reinforcing that tip, so you need to go a little bit past it. So all of our swords um, are a bit flexible at the end. Um, you can go really near, but it's just safer. It means that you're not going to, you know, there's no, it's just, it's just for safety, that's why we do it. You may be really safe with your sword, but you'll leave it around somewhere and some child will pick it up and hit you with it or hit their uh, friends with it. So we, we just hit, we just play for safety. Well, you know, when you're walking to a convention, you know some silly cosplayer's got their weapon on their back and they'll turn around and whack you on. So, yeah, just more safety. Okay, so we've skipped ahead, we've drawn around. You saw, I don't know if you saw Nick do that, but he drew his shape onto the blade. And we're cutting it out. There we go. Uh, that's a Lady Sith sword, someone on our training course made from four. That was really nice. Um, there we go. Okay, so. You're going to mark the blade. Okay. So we only want... We only need a cutting edge on that blade. Um, and I've cut a straight edge. Now this time, once I map this out, which I think we'll see clearly on these slides, we're going to cut it at an angle to get the, the more of a blade. Okay, so how he does the two edges to how wide he wants his cut. This part isn't in the portfolio, I don't think. No, it isn't. Might have taken it out. <laughs> I'll put that back in, that's fine. Again, this is another thing, this is practice. We've done it for years, so Nick's lines are really straight. But you can just get scraps of foam. I like to do this when I'm bored at work. So I just get a piece of scrap foam, 
get a pen, and you just practice by drawing your lines. That's right. right. The easiest way to hold this from the most control um, is right up the top where the, the handle meets the blade. Um, if you hold it down here, you've got very little control over the cutting edge. So try and hold it as near as you can to the actual blade. Is anyone fenced? Any fences? Okay, so, oh yeah, it's very similar when you've got a finger onto the top, you control from the blade, that's why you do that. Yeah. Okay, so he's cutting, you have to cut towards yourself. Now I know in school you get to never cut towards yourself. Um, if, you're, if you're trying to make a prop, we're all adults, just be careful when you do it. But you want a nice smooth cut. And he's cutting in between the lines he's made. Now, if he goes over the line, it's going to be really hard to fix. Um, if he goes in, you can always sand back out. So try and keep the cut within the line. I will admit that it's a lot easier than it, a lot harder than it looks. That takes a lot of practice, but the, the principle is just you that. Um, try not to to saw at it. Most people, most people, when they start, just want to. Most people do this. Uh, if you do that, you'll get a very rough edge. So you really want to try and cut nice and smoothly. And you get a really cut finish. Now we'll sand this down afterwards, um, just to take off any rough edges. But the smoother you can cut it, the better. Uh, to speed up the process, you can use sand machines. Uh, we couldn't bring those today, so we've just got boxes of foam with sandpaper uh, glued on. Um, there's a sand machine there, there's our little workshop. Oh no, it's afterwards. Uh, you can use thinner foam either side if you want a really realistic um, saw blade. Uh, we find that this is, this is a really good sort of size for nice, um, it will make it safe basically. Uh, and most games and things like that, uh, they don't need it. If you want a realistic character though, you could go, this is a 6mm middle with 6mm either side. You could do three mil either side. Okay, you're going to cut the back blade. Awesome. Just going to make it so what Nick's doing now, as you can see on the screen as well, he's cutting towards himself slowly without making sure he's not cutting his fingers off. There we go. So you want to try and do that in one smooth cut. So just to just take off any rough edges at all where you've gone wrong. We use sandpaper, but we use three grades. A coarse grade, a medium grade, and then a soft, uh, fine grade. Just like you would on wood or plaster or anything else. Um, it, all about um, speed, not pressure with foam. You've got to go quite fast, but don't put much pressure on. Otherwise it'll go really furry. And then you can change grits as well to make it more smooth. But yeah, I just went past a little clip. You don't just have to do straight blades. You can see there, there's a nice curved one as well. Those cuts are harder to do, but again, the more times you do it, the more practice, the better you get. Yep, so now he's changing um, densities of um, sandpaper. You might see the leather tip coming through, um, so if you do just sand that down as well, we should be able to do that. If you do want that rugged edge, um, so something that's more of a rough material, then do feel free to leave the edges or cut into it, that's where you get more creative. Um, Skyrim, I know, had the glass saw, they had quite a spike design, so that would look quite nice. But as we want a nice clean cut finish, this is why we're going to take the time and sand it. Also, another little tip, if you've got a mirror at home, if you take the blade and you look at it uh, via the mirror, you'll see if it's a bit wonky or if one side needs more sand than the other. The detail of your eye will just pick it up more. So definitely um, <laughs> look in the mirror. So ideally I'd work on that for about five minutes just to get it nice and smooth. Uh, the other way, if anyone's used foam and you get this rough surface, if you've got a heat gun and you run the heat gun over it, it will, it will take all that burring down. So you end up with a really sort of sealed finish. How hot should you do The heat gun needs to be quite hot, but not near the foam. So you need to... Maybe. Uh, you're dressing to do the job or not? Uh, bigger pardon? Uh, uh, 
so we're going to have to read things a little quicker. <laughs> Any questions so far? No? Okay. We haven't lost anyone yet. We're good. Um, so the next part is we're going to um, use double-sided tape. This is Carpeton's tape. It's really strong. Uh, because we're going to be putting a handle on, um, we don't have to use glue because we're going to be using cord and leather, which is a lot stronger. So just as a quicker process, we use double-sided tape to wrap around the core. So you stick it to a piece of foam. Again, the thickness of the foam depends how um, small your hands are. Um, I need quite a lot, so I've got a good grip. But if you've got a bigger hands, you might want a thinner piece of foam. You can measure it up, put the blade there, see how much um, you need, and then you can just cut off the excess. So you use your <laughs> double-sided tape or foam, and then you wrap it around the core. It's really sticky stuff. Do a thin one first or a thin one? So we use a thin piece of foam first and then a thicker. Again, the same process. Oh, there we go. Again, we then cut at that angle to smooth it round and then to get the smoother finish, you just get the sandpaper and then you smooth it off. I don't think I've seen you make a dagger this week. This is our very first workshop, guys, so if we're missing anything, please let us know and we'll hopefully try to help you guys out. Yeah, we're only um, covering the cutting today. Uh, painting is a whole other section of techniques that we won't have time to do that today and we wouldn't want to, I don't know, redecorate this all by mistake. Um, but if you have got questions on painting as well, we're happy to answer those. Yeah, so um, what I will say is some people tend to favour one over the other. People either really like to cut things and then hate to paint, or really like to paint things and hate to cut. You want to put in as much effort into both aspects, otherwise it will ruin the final outlook. Um, I know people have saved props by having a really good paint job, so never underestimate a good paint job. You can really get some highlights, lowlights, details. Um, we actually use an airbrush to get all the fine details. Um, but yeah, a really good paint job can make your prop look that much awesome. You spent so much time cutting uh, your, your dagger or your sword or whatever you're making, so definitely put in as much effort into the painting. Because it's a single-edged blade, um, and I want the hand to be over to one side, I'm just going to thicken up the narrow edge. So I'm just going to pat out that bit first. Yeah, so this, um, different handles don't have to just be a straight circular. Um, I know with some like older, more like, oh, what's a good, you like the Romans, their, their pommels go out, so you can fit into the palm of your hand more, so you can really use the foam, foam now to shape the handle. So, for instance, you could put like a little lump in the middle, so it fits in your palm better. But it's all up to you, and depending on what you want to make. Feel free to experiment. That's the part he's doing now, so he's making that thick part to go on top. It's a bit hard to see because it's black foam. Uh, so once we've done that, we then use electrical tape. Have we got electrical tape? Aha! That's what we use to draw around our circle to get our hand guard. And we get it in different colours. Um, doesn't really matter what colour you use, we have black today. And then you're going to tighten. Okay, so Nick, what he's doing now is he's narrowing the handle down because he's made it a bit too thick um, and it's all neaten up the joint as well. Yeah. <laughs> so he's starting to struggle when he cuts now. He's starting to start to saw. And you know when you need to saw, you then change your blade. So this will be a nice, smoother cut. Um, one thing I will say about these blades is sometimes they stick together, so make sure that you only get one out. The oil that keeps them nice and clean 
um, likes to stick to each other, so make sure you've got one blade. I've got it in my hands. <laughs> there you go. So once you've got your foam around the core, then get the electrical tape and really, you need a bit of a tight grip for this one and just wrap it all the way around. You can, yeah, you can do this two to three times. so far? Good. Uh, so once that, we're only going to do that once today. Um, again, because it's just to show you a quick demonstration. Um, so we've done the cross guard, we've done the handle, we're now going on to the pommel, which is this part of the blade. And you're just going to flatten that off with a piece of foam. Again, using the contact adhesive. Again, this is really simple stuff. You can do this outside in your garden. Oh, even adds a little collar. See, he has to neat things up. He can't just leave it like that. Um, so, similar to what he did to the top of the blade, he's going to create a thinner piece that just joins up the two pieces from the cross guard to the handle. It's all about these extra details. Most people will go, oh, that's fine, and they'll just leave it. But by putting that little bit more effort into something, it will really make the, the final result that much cooler. Again, cutting at the angle, so when you join the two parts, it's a nice smooth finish. Plus it saves you time, so you don't have to sand it down as much. So he's going to trim once he's stuck his block of foam now. He's now just trimming it off. And he's going to do something very similar to what he did to the front of the blade again, but he's going to do it at the pommel. So he's done a really basic design for the pommel, but you can get really creative. You can go out at an angle. I mean, we've only got pretty simple ones last today. But yeah, you can add detail. So this blade here, if I pass it on, it's got a little foam detail there that you can see. We're almost done now, we nearly have a dagger. This is great. Um, so you can sand it to finish off the joints. And that's it, that's, that's, that's our dagger finished. Uh, we have got the second section of our, um, our little slideshow that goes into the painting, but we're not gonna go into that today. But like I said, we do have a table uh, right in the back corner. Um, so feel free to come and ask us any questions or get all the us or whatever it is. <laughs> Or have our dagger. Have you guys got anything in the audience that you need to give back to us? Yeah, awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so once the dagger's down, we'll actually pass that into the audience as well so you guys can see. But yeah. I mean, you want to take, you don't want to be as quick as we were today. Just take your time. Um, the most important thing, remember, is once you've made your blank, leave it a day, then cut into it. Um, and if you want to make a bigger blade, if you want to do a sword, it's exactly the same process, just bigger. Let's skip along to the end. There we go. So there's some other designs that we've done. Um, we also do live streaming, so on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays um, we do we put the cameras up in our workshop, so here's, we have about seven rooms. Uh, the three main cameras here that you can see um, is our main workroom where we cut and where we paint. Uh, we have the paint room which is the top right corner where everything dries um, and there's a close-up camera on top of Nick so you can see what his hands are getting up to. We are currently sculpting Yoda at the moment. Um, so this is a great place um, if you're working on your own project and you want motivation. It's like a little radio that you can just have us on in the background or we're happy to answer questions so just come into nicer. Um, so feel free to ask us questions or even... And there we go, we have one there. Okay, so obviously it's a little bit wet still, but you can get the idea. So I'll put that in. 
that's a very, very simple one. You can do this quicker. Yeah. When you do it, I take a bit more time. We're going, yes, we're running out of time. Yes, sorry. We're moving on. Okay, we are done. Sorry, we're going to have to move out because we're being hurried. If you want any more, just give us this. Thank you very much. Don't let your phone be foam. <laughs>